80 cannons firing 12-pound solid shot ripped through the British lines. But Wellington does not allow the British to fire back. He will save his cannon shot for when the French infantry and cavalry approach his lines. The ricochet effect was one of the great things about the solid shot. Even on its third bounce, it was still doing devastating effects. It could still break a leg or an ankle. Hard pounding, gentlemen. Indeed, sir. Or well, we will see who can pound the longest. Twenty kilometers away, Blucher and the Prussians are regrouping after being beaten by the French the day before. But rather than retreat east back to Prussia, the wily general heads north. Wir müssen mit Wellington in der Verbundung bleiben. Herr General, dies ist es dir, es ist. Wer schreit zum Ton der Kanonen? It is estimated that over 500 men were killed in this opening salvo of the battle. Then, at approximately one o'clock, Napoleon's guns stopped. With the British troops reeling from the artillery assault, Napoleon quickly assesses the situation and plans the best way to attack the soldiers on the ridge. Attack direct au centre. C'est la clé de la victoire. The strategy of marching directly toward your opponent over open ground may seem ludicrous today. But the firearm technology of the period demanded close quarter combat. The most commonly used firearm at Waterloo was the musket. A soldier aiming his musket at another man 100 meters away has about a 1 in 30 chance of hitting him. If his target is 50 meters away, his chances improve to one in three. Napoleon's direct thrust up the Allied center is intended to break Wellington's army in half and cause it to collapse. He clearly thought a good, solid assault would break their will to resist and lead them into a rout. Remember that Napoleon never really encountered the British before himself, and he tended to uh, underestimate their resolve and their determination to hold their ground. The French advanced on the English line in column formation. Each French column consists of a block of men, 150 across, 24 deep, approximately 3,600 altogether. The sheer numbers of this approaching mass was meant to intimidate and terrify an enemy. The alternative to the French column formation was the British line. Essentially a long row of men, two, sometimes three deep. The line formation gives one major advantage over any other. You can bring all your guns to bear. In a column, only the first two rows of soldiers can safely shoot their guns. In a line, every soldier can shoot giving them a tremendous advantage in firepower. At 2 p.m., the British line awaits the advancing columns of Napoleon. He was just going to punch straight up the middle, whereas normally he won his battles through maneuvering on the flanks. This time, he just wanted to go straight up that road and flatten anything that stood in front of him. And he believed he could. At the top of the ridge, the French column meets the English line with devastating results. The British line, with its superior firepower, Fire! stops the advancing column Fire! in its tracks. 
when you had the right kind of soldier with the right kind of training and the right kind of spirit, the line could hold out against a column, break its charge to the point where it lost its effectiveness. The French troops could not proceed any further. The British countercharge with the support of the cavalry forces Napoleon's troops back to their lines. Well, sir, we brought the battle right to Bonaparte. You act as if the battle is over, Uxbridge. Yet all I see is two brigades of horses destroyed and thousands of men dead. And our lines exactly where they were this morning. The first frontal assault at Waterloo has left thousands of casualties with nothing gained. Nous sommes où L'infanterie Nous sommes de retour. De retour Pourquoi de retour Pourquoi Le centre. Le centre est la clé Ney. Wellington est prête à craquer. Nous, on n'est même pas capable de maintenir le centre. Cette ferme est à nous. Napoleon realizes that he can't control the battlefield without first taking La Haye Saint. Non, votre Altesse. Mais alors, prenez-la à n'importe quel prix. Je ne veux pas vous revoir que lorsque le centre est entre nos mains. The Battle of Waterloo has been underway for three hours. The British line has held, but Wellington knows that nothing has been decided. The battle lines remain completely unchanged, and thousands lie dead. But the battle is about to turn. The French prison! The French prison! June 18th, 1815. Napoleon Bonaparte now stands poised to once again dominate Europe. His strategy is to take control of the center of the battlefield with a direct attack on the British position at La Haye Saint. The most important salient was the one close to Wellington Center, and that was La Haye Saint. It was vital that the French had to get this before they could attack the center, which was their first objective of the battle. The walled farmhouse is defended by the King's German Legion. They were Germans who had fled to England when Napoleon conquered their country in 1805. They have a lot to fight for. If Napoleon is defeated, they can return home. Whoever holds the farmhouse will have control over the all-important center of the battlefield. At 3 p.m., Napoleon orders two full brigades of infantry, 2,000 men, to take the farmhouse at all costs. Facing the Frenchmen are only 450 riflemen. The outnumbered soldiers do have one big advantage, superior firepower. This unit of the British Army carried rifles, not muskets. The rifled grooves inside the barrel spin the bullet, like a quarterback throwing a football, giving it greater range and superior accuracy. At approximately 3.20 p.m., seven hours into the Battle of Waterloo, 2,000 French soldiers charged the small fortress. The French prison! The French prison! The time the walls are about to be breached, the outnumbered Allied riflemen somehow hold off the French. 